Hey everybody, I'm John with Tackle That, and today we're going to be reviewing the 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery from Watt Cycle. So let's tackle that. <music> Alright, she comes nicely packed in a UN box. Let's see what we got inside. Now something I was super interested in this battery is it has a 10 year warranty. I have not heard that from many of these more budget friendly batteries only the big boys that are very expensive so let's see what we're working with so this is the watt cycle lithium ion phosphate battery made in china and uh their website and email is right on the box so that's really good you can contact them and check out their other products uh, with no problem. Let's see what's inside. All right, we got some terminal screws. So interestingly enough, it looks like they're all the same size. Let's make sure. Yep. I would have liked to see two longer ones. Sometimes you get a, some really thick lugs under there or a couple different lugs. Uh, and it's nice to have an option to go with a short one or a longer one. Let's take a look at this battery. Oh, she's definitely heavy. All right. So the size of this is nice. Um, some of these 100 amp hour batteries really come in a big case, but this is a nice compact case allowing you to uh, put a lot of these together if you really want to build a nice big battery bank. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a capacity test on this and see exactly what she'll pull. This is a 100 amp hour battery, so we should hit at least that, if not a little more, if these are truly grade A cells that they advertise uh, on the uh, marketing pamphlet while we're here let's take a look at the manual a thank you note and it shows their uh, charge and discharge curve lithium ion phosphate is a great battery it'll keep that uh, mid 12 voltage range for a long time throughout its charge and discharge weighs 23.15 pounds so here's your specs it's rated at 12.8 nominal cuts off at 10 volts you want to charge this at 14.6 volts um, and then this is actually saying it will support 6,000 cycles at 80% depth of discharge so if you cycle this 80% every day this will last 6,000 days essentially. So I'm gonna put the, the exact amount of years that'll last. Uh, but I think that sounds around uh, maybe 18 years. Just off the top of my head, checking my math, we'll see. So you can also put these in four parallel and four series. That is very important. Um, you can connect these together with other 100 amp hour batteries and make yourself a nice solar bank for your RV or for your house solar system. Wow, this is great. A state of charge chart for you. So let's see what voltage this gets shipped as and we can see what the current state of charge is. Now the the voltage curve is pretty flat on these lithium ion phosphates, so it's just kind of a best estimate, but uh, let's see what we got. So we got 13.0, oh, 13.1 volts. So 13.1 volts would be at a 40% state of charge, which is pretty typical for these. Uh, it's best to ship these 
about a half charge so that they're uh, really nice and stable. Um, and that's also the uh, voltage that you should, uh, you'll get the longest shelf life out of. Ah, some more great information. It actually has a cable size chart. And that is cool because when you hook this up and draw a lot of power from these, you want to make sure you have the right wire sizes. So, so saying to use the same brand, <laughs> that's funny. We are not going to do that. So we're going to connect that to a bunch of different brands and see what happens. Now, if you've ever watched the off grid garage, you'll know you can connect a bunch of different uh, manufacturers and BMSs up together as long as you keep everything balanced. So this is saying it does have a high temperature disconnect. So if you reach 70 Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit, it won't charge anymore to protect the cells. Um, and it says it will not allow charging under 32 degrees or zero degrees Celsius. So that's good. The wide applications are for RV, for solar, industrial battery, to replace 12 volt batteries. Now on that note, don't do what I did and try to jump start your car or your side by side with one of these unless you really know uh, it's not going to draw more than 100 amps. This can handle 100 amps so your starter can't draw more than that. Now an average car will draw, I don't know, six, 700 amps so just know this will not start large inductive motors. Oh, it actually says that not used for starting gasoline engines, haha, <laughs> but it's great for off grid life. And that is the case. All right, let's give her a charge and we'll be back to test the capacity. Now, while we do that, let's make a charging cable for another charger and we'll get this thing charged up real fast. So I got a SAE connector, another SAE connector. I just need to put these alligator clips on here. Very nice. All right, so now we got about eight amps going into this battery. I'll come back and let you know when it's done. Good morning, everybody. We are fully charged and ready to give this a discharge test. So let's hook her up. So this plugs into your battery and plugs into the wall so when your battery dies it can still read out all the important information you want to see because this thing will drain your battery down to, to the disconnect which will, on this battery is 10 volts all right oh, oh, oh. not yet Clear out our settings. All right, 13.5 volts, very nice. Let's give her some juice. All right, so if you divide this out, if you wanna do a 0.2C discharge, which is usually a normal test. Oh, oh. okay, okay. This has a maximum, oh, there it is, Eight, I can't discharge more than 185 watts. So we're gonna have to figure out what the maximum is. If you divide this out though, we would wanna do a 20 amp discharge, which would mean it would take five hours to discharge this 100 amp hour battery. That's the ideal testing co conditions. Now this can't do 20 amps, so 
we actually will just do the maximum this can do and that will actually give the battery an advantage it should perform even better with a slower discharge so let's see what we can get out of this thing and here we go we'll be back in about i don't know seven hours and we'll see what our capacity is of this uh, watt cycle uh, lithium ion phosphate battery always check your wires touch them and see if the connections are warm or the wires are warm and I'm feeling these now and these wires are warm they're probably about I don't know 16 gauge so that's not really thick enough to run 15 amps for a long time so we're gonna switch out to these 10 gauge wires and these SAE connections which will be able to handle that amperage looks like they match up we got positive on the left black on the right and that matches up to the circuit board here so let's plug her in oh. and look we already drew more watts so we can pull more power through these bigger cables so let's dial that back a tad All right, let's see if we can get another 15 amps Nope, oh, looks like we're only going to draw about 14 amps Nope, not even that much. Alright, so she seems pretty happy at 14 amps. We'll come back in about 7 hours and see what the capacity is. Right now, we've drawn 15 watt hours out of the battery and 1.85 amp hours. All right, the test is complete. This watt cycle 100 amp hour battery tested at 103 amp hours, and that is excellent. Um, the advertisement says this is grade A cells. Grade A cells should test higher than the capacity listed on it. All right, so definitely high quality stuff. Uh, more to come uh, with this guy. Let's hook it up. Well, first we gotta charge it back up and uh, then we'll hook it up to some uh, devices and see uh, what we can do. All right, check this out guys. We got our solar set up, the EG4 3000 watt inverter. We've got a little load setter set up. I'm gonna be adding more breakers to that. But when it comes to the battery bank, I am super impressed with this watt cycle uh, 100 amp hour battery. Look how much smaller it is over traditional lithium ion phosphate batteries. It's about 30% smaller with the same capacity.